Shalom everybody and welcome to Rega Beivrit Shorashim edition. As we are starting the book of Shmot, our entire commentary of Shmot going to be focused on the commentary by the Holy Alshich. You probably never heard about Rabbi Moshe Alshich, also known as the Holy Alshich. He was the disciple of Rabbi Yosef Karo, the author of the Shulchan Aruch, which is the volume of Halakha, that is the most authoritative one among the Jewish people, even up to these days. The Holy al has lived in Tzfat up to the age of 92 and died in the year 1600. The al had a unique style of combining the Pshat, the literal, the Midrash, Talmud, together into his very unique, and the thing that he's most famous for, his commentary on the Tanakh itself. Today, as we start the book of Shemot, I would like to focus with you on chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. It says there, Vayakam melech chadash al Mitzrayim, אשר לא ידע את יוסף, ויאמר אל עמו, הנה עם בני ישראל רב ועצום ממנו. A new king came in the power of Egypt who did not know Yosef. He said to his people, Look, the people, the children of Israel, are more numerous and stronger than us. The old Ashik was bothered by verse 9, and he came to explain to us why Pharaoh, was so terrified of the Jewish people. A message, by the way, that is more applicable today in the midst of what Israel is going through than any other time in our history. Listen to what the al Sheikh says. He says, Pharaoh realized that the Jewish people in Egypt had all the attributes that are necessary for one nation to defeat another and sought to warn the Egyptians about this. In essence, the motivating power behind Pharaoh, believe it or not, is fear. He see Bnei Israel, the children of Israel, and he is worried. And his fear was based, and his warning was based on three attributes that the Holy Al Sheikh is giving us straight from the text. Number one, it says they are being united. Number two, they are being assisted by the divine providence in a way that supersedes the natural order. And number three, being physically bigger and stronger than any other opponent. That's the three things that he says in verse 9. Pharaoh saw all those three attributes inside the Jewish people. He was not a foolish man. Therefore, he warned the Egyptian. Let's look exactly what it says. Number one, in verse 9, he used the word Am to, to represent the children of Israel. Listen what the al Sheikh says here. And he says on the word Am, which is the people, the al Sheikh explained that the word Am is singular, meaning people in a sense of a nation indicate that they were unified. When the children of Israel are unified, nothing can stop us. Today is more appropriate than ever to speak about the unification of Jewish people, especially in the state of Israel. So he saw them as one nation, although they are yet to leave Egypt. Number two, he uses the term Bnei Israel, and the Al-Sheikh explained this referring to the Jewish people as the Bnei Israel, indicates that Pharaoh saw that they were assisted in a supernatural way in a divine providence. The Egyptian knew that Israel, the father of the Jewish nation, was assisted by Hashem because the famine ceased when he came down to Egypt. Furthermore, when he entered Pharaoh's palace, the lentil miraculously rose up so that Yaakov could enter the palace without lowering his head, without bowing in essence, before the idol that was placed opposite to the entrance. It was obvious that the Ruach HaKodesh, the divine presence, was favored Yaakov, and he was afraid that he was to be buried 
in Egypt, the Egyptian would use the burial site, some sort of an idol worship. And number three, pay attention to the words that are used from, from Pharaoh. He says, Rav ve'atsum mimein. Those people are greater and stronger than us. This refer to the children of Israel, according to the al who are physically greater and stronger than the Egyptian. Throughout his speech to his people, Pharaoh used a singular form that referred to the two to refer to the Jewish people. By doing so, he emphasized that being unified is the most important of the qualities necessary to for one nation to overcome another. His intention throughout was to warn the Egyptian that they needed to take precautions to prevent the Jewish people from rising up against them and kill them or ruling over them. That's why he used the word Hava Ka in verse 10. The answer in this word that he uses is to take an action in disunifying and breaking the Jewish people. Today we say, Am Israel Chai. May we continue to be one numerous, great with the Holy Spirit and nothing, and I mean nothing, not even the Samas will be standing in our way. God bless you. This is Rega Beivrit with the Holy Al-Shir. See you next week.